In the previous lesson, we installed Composer, we got our directory structure set up, and we stopped just short of figuring out the best way to include this autoload.php file when running all of our PHP unit tests. Well, I'll show you a couple ways to do that. First, let's run our test, PHP unit. This time I'm going to add colors, and we'll run the test to make sure that everything is returning green because that file does exist. But now, once again, if I remove that and we run it again, Oh, we're going to get that class not found. Now, PHP unit includes a bootstrap option. So I could say PHP unit colors bootstrap, and this should point to a file that will be triggered before any of our tests are. So I could say bootstrap is vendor slash autoload.php, and then we'll end everything that has a test suffix within the test directory. And there we go. We still get green. However, now you're thinking, oh, God, that's way too much to write. Wouldn't it be great if we could just write PHP unit? And, of course, you could create an alias, something like alias t equals what we wrote before, but that's not what we're going to do here. Instead, we're going to leverage a PHP unit.xml file within the root of our application. So I'll do that now. Edit PHP unit.xml, and we're going to begin just with a bit of PHP unit here. So I'm opening up this tag, and I will specify what the bootstrap should be. Bootstrap equals vendor slash autoload.php. Now notice if I go back to foo test, we're not referencing it anywhere. However, if I run PHP unit colors on the test directory, we're getting green because it is reading this file automatically. If I delete that, run it again, notice it fails. So now we know that when we trigger PHP unit, it's immediately going to hunt down a PHP unit.xml file within the same folder that you're currently within. And we can do more than just specify an autoload. We can say, let's also say colors equals true. Now I should be able to do PHP unit tests and we still get the colors option, great. Next, let's set it up so that we don't have to specify the test directory. Right now, if I run PHP unit, it has no idea what folder to hunt down because I called mine tests. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to create a test suites element here, like so. And then within each of these, we can specify custom test suites that we want to run. For example, you could separate all of your unit tests from your functional tests and execute them separately. This is what that allows you to do. So I could say test suite like so. And then within here, I simply specify a directory. And that directory will be the test directory. Finally, let's give this test suite a name and we'll just call it all tests. And I'll save that. Now I should be able to run PHP unit and it's going to trigger by default everything within the test directory because we specified that. So if you visit the PHP unit website, you'll find tons of options that we can use here. What I'm going to do is just simply replace this with what I use for all of my projects. And don't let this be overwhelming. Mostly it's basic stuff. For example, the bootstrap is the same. I want colors. Do I want to convert errors to exceptions? Yes. Do I want notices and warnings? Yes. Do I want to process in isolation? No. Should we stop on failure? This just comes down to you. Sometimes I use true, other times I use false. We're gonna set it to true this time. If there is an error, we want it to stop running the test suite. Finally, do we need a syntax check? No, I'm not going to bother with that. And we'll keep the test suite the same. Now, once again, I run PHP unit and we get green, but we've done a lot here. Now we are auto loading all of the files within the source directory by default. We have a clean directory structure. We have a dedicated PHP unit.xml file to describe how we want our tests to be run. All of this is looking great. So now that we have some setup out of the way, let's begin with our first tip.